Hi everybody, Cheryl and Lady coming to you from the Ladies Garden and Home. And I decided to pull a list of everything that I'm growing through the winter. And it's a lot, but don't worry, we'll go quick. I hope you join us. I put a list together of everything that is in the ground that I'm growing through the winter it's over 50 types of plants. It's a lot. Some of it might make it, some of it won't. Last year, um, I had uh, plans to overwinter a whole bunch of things. And unfortunately, for some of them, they got wiped out in late December when we had a super freeze. Here in Zone 7, um, Southwest Connecticut, our lowest average temperature in the winter is 9 degrees. That's Fahrenheit. But last year, we got down to zero, also Fahrenheit. Um, so, you know, all you can do is try. But I thought I'd list these alphabetically to make things, oh, I don't know, a little bit more structured in my head. So I'll take you around and I will show you what I'm planning to overwinter, whether it's outside, undercover, or inside the house. Starting with big old Archie, the artichoke, which was my single seed challenge. I tried starting him a couple of times in the spring and ended up switching the variety. I got a green globe variety that is supposed to be perennial in 7A. I've got him up here against the house. I'm going to bubble wrap his pot and hopefully he will make it through the winter. I've got some arugula. I planted some out uh, two weeks ago and they're just starting to sprout and then just yesterday I planted some more obviously not yet up but arugula is a really hardy uh, leafy green that hopefully will make it through the winter. The next on the list are beets. I planted these actually in the spring and they did practically nothing. They stayed very very small little little sprouts but now they're just starting to get bigger i think they like this cooler weather better although they're not completely freeze tolerant um they are frost tolerant and i'm hoping to get some nice beets before the really hard freeze comes next on the list are these blueberry plants i have two in this one pot one is powder blue and the other one i believe is lemonade i'm not really sure as you can see they put on really nice growth this one's in its third year and this one is in its second year next on my list is something new i'm trying this year which is bok choy uh, these little seedlings have been in the ground about a month they haven't really taken off yet but i did have a cover on them to keep the uh, white cabbage moths away Broccoli did very, very well for me this year. We had a cool spring and a rather cool summer comparatively, and it's given me these shoots, but I have planted more broccoli. This is a Waltham broccoli. It's about five weeks old. It got some damage from the white cabbage moths, even it, though it was underneath the cloth for protection, but I found the uh, worm and I killed it. Next is broccoli rob. I have a bit of succession going. Um, these I transplanted about a month ago. I started them from seed on September 6th. This variety is called Dietrich broccoli rob. And then interplanted with things that are still growing like these bush beans and the marigold are more of the Dietrich broccoli rob. The idea is once these get killed off by the frost, I'll clear out around them and then they'll have plenty of room to grow on. Next are these beauties, our Brussels sprouts. And they're growing very nicely. I don't know if I'll have any of the sprouts by December. 
but whether or not I do, I'm going to cover them up for the winter and hope for that they grow through it and then um, give me some sprouts in the spring. Next is cabbage, and these are golden acre cabbage. They are supposed to do very well through the winter and then um, head up in the spring. And I planted them to kind of um, on a grid here, but through the golden gooseneck squash. And again, when the frost comes and kills off the squash, I'll just pull that and let them grow on. I also planted some red acre cabbage. And since I did not cover these to protect them from the cabbage moths, I'm hoping that the scent of all the different plants that are around them, the carrots, the peppers, the beans, the beets, will confuse the bugs and keep them away. These carrots along this row here, I planted them, I think, in June, and they're not really quite ready yet. But for winter carrots, I have a whole bunch planted in this bed and this bed and even some in this bed. And this was just pretty much from loosely dropped seeds from the carrots that had gone to flower. I only have one cauliflower that made it through the seedling stage. I think I started with six or something. But this one is going to be something that will come through for me in the spring. I hope. This beautiful patch of celery here, uh, some of those plants are on their second year. Those are the ones that are still flowering. But some of them from self-seeding, or me scattering the seeds, I should say, are little sprouts. And I'm going to be covering the center part of this bed with plastic row cover to make it through the winter. Next on the list are fava beans, which I interplanted, I sowed direct just yesterday in between the peppers. And these are very hardy. It may need a little bit of frost cloth to get it through the winter, but the beans will grow up through the spring. Just a fig named Sue is going to get a new pot uh, because it's grown quite a bit. And it's going to go in. The leaf here is just starting to turn color. Um, figs need a bit of cold dormancy. They can tolerate a frost, but not a deep freeze. So, so I'm going to wait a little while, and before the freeze happens, I'll bring it inside. This year in the beds where the carrots are now that I showed you, I'm going to be planting the garlic, but I'm not going to be planting that up until after our first frost. Last year I waited until the middle of November to plant them and I had a great harvest. And I think it's because they didn't start sprouting because of the warmth um, before they were able to develop a nice bulb system with roots and everything through the winter, which is what they need. Next on the list is kale. And many of you that watch my channel know I am not a fan of kale. However, um, I have red Russian kale planted and I have scarlet kale planted. And those are very pretty plants. And I thought it would give me some color throughout the winter months up here on the deck. I just sowed them directly yesterday, so you're not going to see anything yet. These leeks I'm going to let... Um, grow on through the winter, I was going to harvest them a little early to make room for garlic, but I decided where I'm going to put my garlic. So I've been pulling these uh, more mature ones as I've needed them in cooking, but leeks are nice because they are so cold hardy. You can come out here in the middle of winter when you need a little onion flavor for a soup or something and pull it as needed. In the green stalk, I have some lettuce, and although it's supposed to be, these varieties anyway, this little gem, is supposed to be pretty cold hardy, uh, we've had a very mild fall, all in all, and so some of them are starting to, to bolt. 
but the lettuce I'm hoping, especially the more cold hardy varieties, will do well throughout most of the uh, early winter anyway. And I've got potatoes growing. I'm hoping to have these potatoes ready by Christmas. Um, I planted them, when did I plant them? In early September, September 2nd. And um, hopefully in two months time, I'll have some nice fingerling potatoes. And potato greens are not frost hardy. They will die back. Um, but the potatoes you can leave in the bag as long as they don't completely freeze, they'll be okay and uh, stored well. I've got four nice, winty, hardy, purple sprouting broccoli plants in these grow bags here. I have tried planting them before, but I think I started them too late. These I started early September uh, in seed trays, and I planted them out about a month ago. Now, the nice thing about purple sprouting broccoli, it's supposed to come to harvest very, very early, actually late winter. I have some radishes here in various phases. And I think I'm going to see if I can get one more crop of radishes in. They don't mind the cold weather at all. However, when they say they're a very fast growing variety, they are, but um, not necessarily in the fall as the light uh, gets a little bit dimmer and the days get shorter. Spinach. I've planted spinach along these decks. This is Bloomsdale. But I've planted up a lot of spinach in the green stalk. I'm going to be planting some spring onions that are supposed to be very cold hardy um, in the next couple of days. And we've got the ever bearing strawberries. And as you can see, they're still bearing although they've slowed down quite a bit from the time that uh, it takes for them to make a fruit. But this cart is um, three years old now. Some of the plants are a little bit older, but some of the plants are really brand new seedlings. And we've got some Swiss chard. Now I sowed these back in August. These are two years old. So I don't have a lot of chard this year. I'm kind of hoping that the spinach does well because quite honestly, I like to use the Swiss chard really as a substitute for spinach when I don't have it. Next are my herbs and because they're pretty much all up here on the deck, I just thought I'd go over, I've got catnip, oregano, and thyme over there. I've got sage, dill, lemon balm. This, uh, obviously this basil, I'm just leaving these up for the uh, bees right now. Those could be pulled anytime. I've got parsley, I've got cilantro, rosemary, more thyme and chives that I just harvested. And this lovely rosemary plant that I propagated last winter inside. And all of those are going to go inside the mini greenhouse. It's not heated, but it's up against the house. So I think it'll stay warm enough to withstand any kind of really hard freeze we might get. Although most of these are cold hardy and perennial, and many of them have overwintered without me doing anything to them, just leaving them in the deck containers right up here. And we've got mint, of course. Um, I keep it in this little box container here um, so it doesn't spread out all over the yard. But um, this comes back every year. Don't let the butterfly bush fool you. Last year, it looked like it completely died. And because I took my sweet time cleaning up um, 
the plants on the deck. I didn't get to it very quickly and it ended up starting to sprout from the middle so it grew completely back is my point. So this again will go up on the deck by the house. This pretty chrysanthemum is going to get planted in the flower bed. Chrysanthemums won't really winter over in our area unless you plant them in the ground and take them out of their pots. They need a good uh, established root system to make it through the winter. This echinacea looks worse for wear. It really looks like something had been chomping on it. But um, I did get some nice flowers this year. And I actually use this medicinally. So I have five plants in this row here. And they come back every year. This lavender is on its fourth year, and it was only about six or seven plants, but you see how they filled out, and they don't die back at all in the winter. They, they remain evergreen, which is very nice to have that in the garden through the winter. Two lilac plants, one doing very well, and one not so much, but I'm going to move these up into the deck too to winter over by the house. These pansies will also go into the mini greenhouse over the winter. I started these from seed uh, probably back in January and by uh, the middle of spring I got a couple of flowers out of them. Then when it got very hot I moved them into the shade um, just to kind of over summer them <laughs> um, through the hot, hot months. And then as you can see, this fall, they're starting to put on a nice little show. Look at those faces, aren't they cute? These rose bush pots are going to go up on the deck by the house. So behind me in this flower bed here, this year I'm going to be putting in a bunch of uh, spring bulbs that I ordered. And I hope you stay tuned for when I film that video. I'm going to be planting snowdrops, crocuses, daffodils, tulips, irises. And I hope that'll give a succession of color in the spring. And then because these would never make it through a frost. I've brought inside basil, ginger, which I'm about to uh, start over with, this paprika pepper plant. I have a whole bunch of different plants that I'm propagating, roses, hibiscus, coleus, pocketbook, and the hibiscus plant, which I'm finally starting to get flowers from. So I did something a little bit silly. Um, this is me two days later after I filmed that video. I got through uploading and editing pretty much all of the video. And then I realized that when I went to sign off, I did not press the on button. I did, however, press the off button and then the on button again, giving you a nice shot of me walking up the deck and going inside the house and then my ceiling fan for about a half an hour. Anyway, I'm back now. I just wanted to kind of recap that I counted out how many plants we talked about in this video and there's 55 different types of plants, not varieties, plants. And that doesn't include the house plants because I consider them they're supposed to be inside anyway. These are the ones that I want to overwinter either in the ground, under cover, whether it's going to be a plastic uh, row cover, or it's going to be a frost cloth, in the greenhouse, or inside, depending on what temperatures they can tolerate. So I hope this gives you a little bit of uh, encouragement if you live in a zone, um, whether just a little bit lower than zone 7 where I am, or a little bit higher, that you can actually have a year-round garden. Um, you just kind of need to plan ahead. So as you're planning for 2024, 
think about what you might want to put into the garden to go over the winter. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. And I hope you subscribe and join our growing community. We've had a couple of new subscriptions uh, lately, so that's great. And from the Ladies Garden and Home, enjoy your gardening journey. Bye. I just checked to make sure that this was recording. Say goodbye, lady. She's inside. It's cold. It's raining.